Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Teachings that you have invested in me has produced healing and relationship with God in my life. So I'm just eternally grateful to you and to your ministry. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the end of a series that I've been doing for five weeks on spirit, soul, and body. Most people would call this your identity in Christ, who you are in Christ, in Christ realities, lots of different things, but I just call it spirit, soul, and body. That's how the Lord revealed this to me. And this has become a foundation of everything I teach. I'm giving this book away. It's a 160-page book, and it's a freebie. No strings attached to it. We've also got every way that you could possibly get this teaching. We've got it available. But today will be my last day to offer this over television, so I encourage you to please go to the effort of requesting it today. You can write us. You can call us. We'll give out all that information at the end of the program today. I've covered so much material, there's no way that I can effectively summarize all of this. But let me just say that one of the greatest benefits of knowing that it's my spirit that is the born-again me. My body didn't get changed. My mental, emotional part didn't get changed. They're in the process of being changed as I submit myself to the Lord, but they aren't perfect yet, and they aren't going to be perfect until Jesus comes back or until I go to be with Him and get a glorified body. It really has just liberated me to find out that there is a me on the inside that is perfect. I've already used those verses out of Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10 and 14, that we've been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And if we've been sanctified, we have been perfected forever. That's not talking about my body, my mind. They aren't perfect, but my spirit is perfect. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23 says, to, we've come to the spirits of just men made perfect. It's your spirit that was made perfect. And I tell you, this has revolutionized me to understand that there is a part of me that I can't see, taste, hear, smell, or feel. I just have to go to the Word and look in this spiritual mirror and take what I see here, regardless of how I feel. I have been set free from feelings. I still have feelings, and if they're good feelings, if it's consistent with what God wants me to feel, well, then I'll indulge them. But if I have a feeling that goes contrary to what God's Word says, I am free from those feelings. I do not have to be controlled and dominated by feelings. It has just set me free to find out that there is a part of me that is exactly what Jesus wants it to be, and that is my new identity, and I am not limited to what I can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. You know, I forget where I've said what, and so I might have said this in the beginning of this teaching, but I've literally had people spit in my face. I've had people spit uh, wads of chewing tobacco in my face. I've been kidnapped. I've been insulted. I've been slandered. And my feelings, I don't enjoy that. If you like rejection, something's wrong with you. So (laughs) I don't enjoy it. It's not like I enjoy these things that have happened to me, but I know that there's a part of me that has love, joy, and peace, and that never gets offended over things that uh, is just like Jesus. Jesus turned around to the very people who were crucifying Him and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. My born-again spirit is identical to Jesus. I have that ability to love the very person who hates me. And I can't tell you how freeing this is, that I am not trapped and limited to what I see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. I'm not limited to how I feel in my emotions. Boy, that is liberating. You know, let me share a passage of Scripture with you out of Ephesians chapter 4. And there was a a year, I forget exactly when this was, but there was one year that I got to study in in Ephesians chapter 4, and I spent the entire year studying. 
THESE VERSES. AND I, I WOULD GO TO OTHER PASSAGES OF SCRIPTURE AS THE LORD WOULD REMIND ME OF SOMETHING, AND I'D GO STUDY IT AS IT RELATED TO THIS. BUT BASICALLY, I SPENT ONE WHOLE YEAR IN EPHESIANS CHAPTER 4, AND PROBABLY AT LEAST HALF A DOZEN OR MORE OF THE SERIES THAT I TEACH CAME OUT OF THIS. SO THERE'S A LOT OF TRUTH IN THIS. BUT IN EPHESIANS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 17, IT SAYS, THIS I SAY, THEREFORE, AND TESTIFY IN THE LORD, THAT YE HENCEFORTH WALK NOT AS OTHER GENTILES WALK IN THE VANITY OF THEIR MIND. AGAIN, I PRAY THAT YOU HAVE EITHER HEARD THIS WHOLE TEACHING, THAT YOU GET THE MATERIALS, OR GO BACK TO OUR ARCHIVES AND PUT ALL OF THIS TOGETHER, BECAUSE THIS FITS PERFECTLY WITH EVERYTHING I'VE BEEN TEACHING. HE'S PRAYING THAT YOU WOULDN'T WALK LIKE THE GENTILES. HE WAS SPEAKING TO JEWS HERE, SO BASICALLY YOU COULD SAY, DON'T WALK LIKE A PERSON THAT DOESN'T KNOW GOD, A PERSON WHO ISN'T BORN AGAIN, WHO WALKS IN THE VANITY OF THEIR MIND. BOY, THAT IS DESCRIPTIVE OF 99.9% OF ALL PEOPLE. EVEN MOST CHRISTIANS WALK IN THE VANITY OF THEIR MIND. THEY ARE JUST GOING BY THIS BRAIN, TRYING TO FIGURE THINGS OUT. AND YOUR finite, your MIND IS FINITE. IT IS LIMITED. YOU CAN'T SEE THINGS THAT ARE OFF IN THE FUTURE WITH JUST YOUR MIND. BUT THE SCRIPTURE SAYS THAT THE HOLY SPIRIT WILL SHOW YOU THINGS TO COME, THAT IN YOUR SPIRIT YOU HAVE THE MIND OF CHRIST AND YOU KNOW ALL THINGS. DID YOU KNOW WE AS BELIEVERS DON'T HAVE TO WALK ONLY IN THE VANITY OF OUR MIND. WE CAN WALK BY THE SPIRIT AND GOD CAN SHOW US THINGS AND TELL US THAT, NO, DON'T GO DOWN THIS ROAD. INSTEAD, GO THIS DIRECTION. AND YET MOST PEOPLE AREN'T LETTING THEIR SPIRIT LEAD THEM. THEY ARE JUST LETTING CIRCUMSTANCES LEAD THEM. THEY'RE JUST LOOKING AT THINGS AND TRYING TO FIGURE IT OUT AND MUDDLE THROUGH, EVEN LIKE PEOPLE THAT DON'T KNOW THE LORD. MAN, that is, THIS IS A POWERFUL VERSE. DON'T LIVE LIKE PEOPLE THAT DON'T KNOW THE LORD WHO WALK IN THE VANITY OF THEIR MIND. YOU COULD SAY IN THE LIMITATIONS OF THEIR MIND. THAT WORD VANITY RIGHT THERE, IT LITERALLY MEANS THE TRANSIENTNESS AND INUTILITY OF YOUR MIND. TRANSIENTNESS MEANS THAT YOU AREN'T FIXED. YOU'RE JUST FLUCTUATING. YOU THINK WHATEVER. JUST CIRCUMSTANCES AROUND YOU CONTROL YOU. you YOU AREN'T EVER GOING TO ARRIVE AT YOUR DESTINATION IF YOU LET CIRCUMSTANCES JUST CONTROL YOU LIKE A WAVE OF THE SEA. YOU'RE DRIVEN WITH THE WIND AND TOSSED IS WHAT IT SAYS OVER IN JAMES CHAPTER 1. YOU HAVE TO HAVE A FIXED PURPOSE. YOU HAVE TO KNOW GOD'S WILL FOR YOUR LIFE, AND THEN YOU FOCUS ON THIS, AND YOU NEED TO WALK BY THE SPIRIT AND NOT WALK JUST IN YOUR FLESH IN THE VANITY OF YOUR OWN MIND. AND THEN IT GOES ON TO SAY IN VERSE 18, HAVING THE UNDERSTANDING DARKENED, AND THIS WORD FOR UNDERSTANDING HERE IS THE GREEK WORD, DIANOIA, AND IT LITERALLY MEANS DEEP THOUGHT IS WHAT IT MEANS. IN OTHER WORDS, THERE IS A SURFACE LEVEL OF THINKING, AND THIS IS WHERE MOST PEOPLE LIVE, BUT THEN YOU CAN GO INTO THE DEEP THOUGHTS. YOU CAN BEGIN TO GET INTO YOUR IMAGINATION. THIS SAME WORD WAS TRANSLATED IMAGINATIONS IN LUKE CHAPTER 1, VERSE 51. AND SO THIS IS TALKING ABOUT YOUR ABILITY TO PERCEIVE THINGS WITH YOUR HEART THAT YOU CAN'T SEE WITH YOUR EYES. SEE, THAT'S WHAT AN IMAGINATION IS. AN IMAGINATION IS WHEN YOU ARE SEEING SOMETHING IN THE HEART THAT YOU CAN'T SEE WITH YOUR PHYSICAL EYES. AND THIS IS TALKING ABOUT THAT IF YOU WALK IN THE VANITY OF YOUR MIND, IF YOU'RE ONLY USING YOUR MENTAL RESOURCES, AND IF YOU AREN'T DRAWING ON THE SPIRIT MAN AND THE NEW BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT THAT HAS THE MIND OF CHRIST IN IT, THEN IT WILL CAUSE YOUR UNDERSTANDING TO BECOME DARKENED. IT WILL KEEP YOU FROM HAVING DEEP THOUGHTS. IT'LL KEEP YOU FROM UNDERSTANDING THINGS. AND THE END RESULT OF THAT, IT GOES ON TO SAY IN THIS VERSE, IS BEING ALIENATED FROM THE LIFE OF GOD THROUGH THE IGNORANCE THAT IS IN THEM. SO IF, you, if YOU'RE WALKING LIKE an, A PERSON THAT DOESN'T KNOW THE LORD AND YOU'RE JUST USING YOUR OWN BRAIN POWER, YOU AREN'T BEING LED BY THE SPIRIT, YOU AREN'T DRAWING ON THE MIND OF CHRIST THAT'S IN YOU, THEN IT CAUSES YOU TO NOT HAVE UNDERSTANDING OF THE DEEP THINGS. YOU'RE JUST THINKING ON A SURFACE LEVEL. THAT ALIENATES YOU FROM THE LIFE OF GOD THROUGH THE IGNORANCE THAT IS IN YOU. AND THEN IT SAYS, BECAUSE OF THE BLINDNESS OF THEIR HEART. THIS WILL LITERALLY BLIND YOU. IT'LL HARDEN YOU TO THE THINGS OF GOD. AGAIN, I'M TRYING TO CRAM EVERYTHING I KNOW INTO THIS ONE LITTLE PROGRAM. THIS IS OUR LAST DAY ON THIS. BUT GOD NEVER, EVER INTENDED US TO LIVE AS JUST A BODY AND A SOUL, A MENTAL PART. 
There is a spiritual part to us, and this is how we relate to God. John chapter 4, verse 24 says, God is a spirit, and He created us in His image, in His likeness. He created us a spirit being. We are primarily a spirit being that has a soul and lives in a body, but the spirit part of us is the real part. BEFORE WE GOT BORN AGAIN, THAT SPIRIT WAS SEPARATED FROM GOD. IT WAS BY NATURE A CHILD OF THE DEVIL, AND THAT REPRODUCED ITSELF IN OUR THOUGHTS AND IN OUR ACTIONS. WHEN YOU COME TO THE LORD AND GET BORN AGAIN, THAT OLD DEAD SPIRIT IS TAKEN OUT, AND YOU GET A BRAND NEW SPIRIT, AND IN THE SPIRIT, MAN, YOU KNOW GOD IN A WAY THAT YOU CAN'T EVER JUST KNOW HIM THROUGH YOUR BRAIN. YOU HAVE TO KNOW HIM SPIRIT TO SPIRIT. YOU CAN BE LED BY GOD. YOU CAN KNOW THINGS IN THE SPIRIT THAT YOU CAN'T KNOW IN JUST YOUR PHYSICAL MIND. YOU HAVE TO BE WALKING BY THE SPIRIT. YOU KNOW, I EVEN HATE TO MAKE THIS COMPARISON, BUT IT JUST CAME TO MIND RIGHT NOW, SO I'M GOING TO GO AHEAD AND SHARE IT. BUT IF ANY OF YOU HAVE EVER SEEN ANY OF THE STAR WARS STUFF, I'M NOT A BIG STAR WARS FAN. BUT I REMEMBER PART OF THIS WAS THAT THEY WERE JUST HAVING SO MUCH STUFF GOING ON, AND THEY TRAINED THESE JEDI, I THINK WAS THE NAME OF IT, THAT YOU HAD TO, YOU HAD TO FLY BY, uh, I DON'T KNOW WHAT THEY CALLED IT, I GUESS THE FORCE OR SOMETHING, BUT I WOULD RELATE IT TO THE SPIRIT. YOU HAD TO BE LED BY THE SPIRIT. YOU COULDN'T JUST GO BY WHAT YOU WERE SEEING AND WHAT YOU WERE THINKING. AND WHEN THEY WOULD DO THAT, AND WHEN THEY WOULD LET THIS FORCE TAKE OVER, THEY COULD DO THINGS BEYOND JUST HUMAN ABILITY. WELL, THAT MAY BE A VERY POOR EXAMPLE, BUT NONETHELESS, I'M SAYING THAT IF YOU ARE JUST LIVING BY YOUR OWN NATURAL FORCE AND YOUR OWN NATURAL ABILITY, THEN YOU AREN'T PLAYING WITH THE FULL DECK. GOD MADE YOU NOT ONLY A BODY AND A SOUL, BUT HE MADE YOU A SPIRIT BEING, AND BY THE SPIRIT IS HOW YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO LIVE. THE SPIRIT BEING IS THE REAL YOU. AND IF YOU'VE BEEN BORN AGAIN, IF YOU MADE JESUS YOUR LORD, I GUARANTEE YOU, YOUR SPIRIT MAN IS AWESOME. YOUR SPIRIT PERSON IS PERFECT AND COMPLETE, HAS THE MIND OF CHRIST, HAS THE FRUIT OF THE SPIRIT, LOVE, JOY, PEACE, LONG-SUFFERING, GENTLENESS, GOODNESS, FAITH, MEEKNESS, AND TEMPERANCE. ALL OF THOSE THINGS ARE IN YOUR SPIRIT CONSTANTLY, AND THEY ABIDE. AND WE NEED TO GET TO WHERE WE START WALKING BY THE SPIRIT INSTEAD OF WALKING JUST IN OUR FLESH. SO THIS IS WHAT THIS IS TALKING ABOUT. DON'T BE LIKE A PERSON THAT DOESN'T KNOW THE LORD WHO IS JUST WALKING IN THE VANITY OF YOUR MIND. YOU HAVE YOUR UNDERSTANDING DARKENED. YOU'RE ALIENATED FROM THE LIFE OF GOD THROUGH THE IGNORANCE THAT IS IN YOU BECAUSE OF THE BLINDNESS OF YOUR HEART. AND THEN IN VERSE 19, IT SAYS, WHO BEING PAST FEELING HAVE GIVEN THEMSELVES OVER UNTO LASCIVIOUSNESS TO WORK ALL UNCLEANNESS WITH GREEDINESS. YOU KNOW, WE DON'T USE THE WORD LASCIVIOUSNESS VERY MUCH TODAY, BUT THIS IS JUST... LASCIVIOUSNESS IS TALKING ABOUT EMOTIONS, BUT IT'S UNBRIDLED, UNCONTROLLED, UNRESTRAINED EMOTIONS. AND SO THIS IS SAYING THAT THEY HAVE GONE PAST FEELING AND HAVE GIVEN THEMSELVES OVER UNTO LASCIVIOUSNESS, UNBRIDLED, UNCONTROLLED, UNRESTRAINED EMOTIONS. IN OTHER WORDS, THERE IS A RIGHT USE OF EMOTIONS. GOD GAVE US EMOTIONS. EMOTIONS ARE REALLY uh, THE SPICE OF LIFE. YOU KNOW, IF WE HAD NO EMOTIONS, IF WE WERE JUST LIKE A ROBOT OR SOMETHING AND DIDN'T HAVE ANY FEELINGS, MAN, LIFE WOULD BE uh, THE PITS. EMOTIONS ARE GOOD, BUT EMOTIONS ALSO CAN BE THE WORST PART OF LIFE, AND THIS IS WHY PEOPLE WHO ARE DEPRESSED AND DISCOURAGED AND JUST CAN'T SEE ANY HOPE, AND MANY PEOPLE GIVE THEMSELVES OVER TO... Uh, SUICIDE AND ALL KINDS OF TERRIBLE THINGS. THEY TRY AND DROWN THEIR SORROWS IN, in DRUGS OR IN ALCOHOL. EMOTIONS ARE THE BEST AND THE WORST PART OF LIFE. BUT EMOTIONS ARE GIVEN BY GOD, AND THERE IS A RIGHT USE OF THEM. BUT WHEN YOU GO INTO LASCIVIOUSNESS, WHERE YOU DON'T CONTROL YOUR EMOTIONS, BUT YOU LET THEM CONTROL YOU, THAT IS... INCORRECT. AND THE WAY YOU DO THIS IS YOU RECOGNIZE THAT THERE IS A PART OF YOU, THIS SPIRIT PART THAT WAS BORN AGAIN, THAT IS BEYOND EMOTIONS. IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT YOU ARE FEELING IN YOUR FLESH. YOU GO BY WHO YOU ARE IN THE SPIRIT. MAN, THERE'S TIMES THAT PEOPLE COME UP TO ME AND I FEEL NOTHING. 
BUT YOU KNOW WHAT? I'VE LEARNED THAT THERE IS A SPIRIT BEING ON THE INSIDE OF ME THAT IS BORN AGAIN, AND I HAVE HIS SUPERNATURAL POWER, AND I HAVE JUST LEARNED TO QUIT LETTING WHAT I FEEL LIMIT ME FROM DOING WHAT GOD TOLD ME TO DO. I REMEMBER ONE TIME I WAS IN CHICAGO, AND I GOT A CALL, AND THEY ASKED ME TO COME PRAY FOR SOMEBODY, AND THIS PERSON WAS SO BAD, THEY WERE IN SUCH BAD SHAPE, THEY COULD NOT COME TO THE MEETING. AND SO THEY WERE IN A HOTEL ROOM, AND THEY ASKED ME TO COME AND PRAY FOR THIS PERSON. SO I TOOK ONE OF MY EMPLOYEES WITH ME, AND WE WENT UP TO THIS LADY'S ROOM, AND I FORGET EXACTLY, I THINK IT WAS CANCER, BUT SHE WAS IN TERRIBLE SHAPE. I MEAN, SHE WAS DOWN TO VIRTUALLY NOTHING. THEY HAD ONLY GIVEN HER LIKE A WEEK TO LIVE, AND SHE WAS IN SO MUCH PAIN, THEY HAD DOPED HER UP SO MUCH THAT, I MEAN, SHE WOULD TRY AND TALK TO US, AND SHE WOULD START SAYING SOMETHING, AND SHE'D FALL ASLEEP, AND when her, chin, WHEN HER CHIN HIT HER CHEST, SHE'D WAKE UP, AND SHE'D TRY AND FINISH HER SAYING. SHE WAS IN AND OUT, AND THE LITTLE BIT THAT I COULD TALK TO HER, SHE HAD ONLY SEEN ME ON TELEVISION ONE WEEK BEFORE AND HEARD ME GIVE A TESTIMONY OF SOMEBODY WHO WAS MIRACULOUSLY HEALED. I TALKED TO HER FAMILY MEMBERS THAT WERE WITH HER, AND THEY DIDN'T HAVE A CLUE ABOUT HEALING. THIS WAS ALL BRAND NEW TO THEM. AND THEY ASKED ME TO PRAY, AND I COULDN'T EVEN REALLY COMMUNICATE WITH THE WOMAN BECAUSE SHE WAS IN AND OUT OF CONSCIOUSNESS. AND SO ANYWAY, I JUST WENT AHEAD AND LAID HANDS ON HER AND PRAYED FOR HER TO BE HEALED LIKE WHAT GOD TOLD ME. AND IT SAYS IN JAMES CHAPTER 5, IF YOU LAY HANDS ON THE SICK, THEY SHALL RECOVER. AND SO I JUST DID IT BECAUSE THAT'S WHAT GOD SAID, BUT I DIDN'T FEEL A THING. MATTER OF FACT, WHAT I FELT WAS TOO LITTLE, TOO LATE. THIS WOMAN WASN'T EVEN CONSCIOUS ENOUGH TO STAY AWAKE MORE THAN JUST A SECOND OR TWO AT A TIME. AND I HONESTLY JUST FELT LIKE THERE'S NO WAY THAT THIS WOMAN'S GOING TO BE HEALED. BUT I'D ALSO LEARNED THAT DEATH AND LIFE IS IN THE POWER OF THE TONGUE, PROVERBS 18, 21, AND I'D LEARNED NOT TO SPEAK FORTH MY DOUBTS. BUT I DIDN'T FEEL ANY ANOINTING. I DIDN'T FEEL ANY CONFIDENCE THAT SHE WAS GOING TO BE HEALED. I DIDN'T FEEL... EVERYTHING I FELT WAS NEGATIVE. BUT SEE, THIS TEACHING ON SPIRIT, SOUL, AND BODY, IT JUST SET ME FREE TO REALIZE THAT WHAT I FEEL IS NOT ALL THAT THERE IS. THERE IS A SPIRIT BEING, AND THERE'S A SPIRITUAL WORLD, AND I'VE LEARNED TO JUST ACT ON WHAT THE WORD SAYS AND NOT WHAT I FEEL. SO ANYWAY, WE LEFT THAT ROOM, AND I CAME THAT CLOSE TO TELLING THE PERSON WITH ME, TOO LITTLE, TOO LATE, IT'S NOT GOING TO WORK, THAT WOMAN'S GOING TO DIE. BUT I DIDN'T SAY ANYTHING. AND IT WAS ONLY ABOUT THREE MONTHS LATER. I THINK IT WAS IN HOUSTON. IT WAS IN CHICAGO THAT I PRAYED WITH HER, BUT IN HOUSTON, I HAD A WOMAN COME RUNNING DOWN THE AISLE, AND I HAD A LITTLE PLATFORM THAT WAS ABOUT TWO FEET TALL, AND SHE RAN AND JUMPED UP ON THE PLATFORM. AND SHE SAYS, DO YOU REMEMBER ME? AND I DIDN'T REMEMBER HER BECAUSE SHE LOOKED ALIVE NOW. SHE LOOKED NEARLY DEAD BEFORE. AND I SAID, NO. AND SHE TOLD ME. SHE SAID, I'M THE WOMAN THAT YOU CAME TO MY HOTEL ROOM AND PRAYED FOR ME. AND THIS WOMAN WAS MIRACULOUSLY HEALED. AND I GUARANTEE YOU, I WOULD HAVE LIMITED WHAT GOD COULD DO THROUGH ME IF I WOULD HAVE TIED MY FAITH TO WHAT I FELT, TO WHAT I SAW. I THINK THIS IS ONE REASON THAT GOD SENT THE DISCIPLES OUT TWO BY TWO. IT'S BECAUSE ONE OF US NEEDS TO BE BLINDFOLDED AND THE OTHER ONE LEAD US BY THE HAND SO THAT WE CAN PRAY FOR THESE PEOPLE AND DON'T LET WHAT WE SEE AND WHAT WE FEEL OVERWHELM OUR FAITH. YOU GOT TO GET TO A PLACE THAT WHAT you, YOU ACT ON WHO YOU ARE IN CHRIST REGARDLESS OF WHAT THE PHYSICAL CIRCUMSTANCES stands, LOOK LIKE. AND SOME PEOPLE THINK, HOW DO YOU DO THAT? WELL, AGAIN, I'VE GOT A, a GREAT TEACHING ON THIS. i GOT A SERIES ENTITLED HARDNESS OF HEART, AND THE LAST SERIES ON THAT IS TALKING FROM MATTHEW CHAPTER 17 ABOUT THE DISCIPLES SAYING, WHY COULDN'T WE CAST THIS DEMON OUT? AND HE SAID, IT'S BECAUSE OF YOUR UNBELIEF. NOT BECAUSE OF YOUR LITTLE FAITH. HE SAYS IT'S YOUR UNBELIEF, BECAUSE VERILY, IF YOU SAY UNTO THIS MOUNTAIN, BE REMOVED, BE CAST INTO THE SEA, IT'LL OBEY YOU. AND THEN HE SAYS, HOW BE IT, THIS KIND DOES NOT COME OUT. THIS KIND OF UNBELIEF ONLY COMES OUT THROUGH PRAYER AND FASTING. PRAYER AND FASTING IS... PRAYER IS WHERE YOU JUST ARE FOCUSED ON GOD. I'M NOT TALKING ABOUT RELIGIOUS PRAYER WHERE YOU'RE GOING THROUGH SOME BEAD AND JUST REPEATING A MANTRA OVER AND OVER. BUT I'M TALKING ABOUT COMMUNION WITH GOD. IF YOU REALLY CONNECT WITH HIM AND GET BEYOND THE PHYSICAL AND YOU GET INTO THE SPIRITUAL REALM, 
AND THEN IF YOU uh, FAST, FAST IS WHEN YOU DENY THIS FLESH AND YOU SAY, WE AREN'T GOING TO LIVE BY BREAD ALONE, BUT WE'RE GOING TO LIVE BY EVERY WORD THAT PROCEEDS OUT OF THE MOUTH OF GOD. AND WHEN YOU GET TO WHERE YOU JUST CONSTANTLY PUT THE SPIRIT ABOVE THIS PHYSICAL REALM, YOU CAN GET TO WHERE WHAT YOU SEE AND TASTE AND HEAR AND SMELL AND FEEL DOESN'T DOMINATE YOU, BUT SPIRITUAL TRUTH DOMINATES YOU MORE THAN PHYSICAL TRUTH. IT'S A PROCESS. IT EVEN SAYS OVER IN HEBREWS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 14, IT SAYS, STRONG MEAT BELONGS TO THOSE WHO BY REASON OF USE HAVE THEIR SENSES EXERCISED TO DISCERN BOTH GOOD AND EVIL. AND SO IT'S A PROCESS. YOU HAVE TO GET YOUR SENSES EXERCISED. THAT WORD IS IMPLYING THAT IT'S NOT A ONE-TIME THING. EXERCISE ISN'T WHERE YOU GO OUT AND WORK OUT ONE DAY. NO, IT'S WHERE YOU EXERCISE ON A REGULAR BASIS. AND SO IF YOU CONSTANTLY JUST BEGIN TO START PUTTING THE WORD OF GOD AND PRAYING IN TONGUES AND OPERATING IN THE SPIRIT AND and NOT LEANING ON YOUR OWN UNDERSTANDING, BUT INSTEAD DRAWING ON THE POWER OF GOD, YOU CAN, OVER A PERIOD OF TIME, GET TO WHERE THE SPIRIT REALM AND WHO YOU ARE IN CHRIST AND WHAT YOU HAVE IN CHRIST IS MORE REAL TO YOU THAN WHAT YOU CAN SEE, TASTE, HEAR, SMELL, OR FEEL. AND WHEN YOU DO THAT, YOU'LL EVENTUALLY GET TO A PLACE TO WHERE THE SPIRIT MAN HAS NO LIMITATIONS ON IT EXCEPT THE LIMITATIONS YOU PUT ON IT. AND YOU'LL TAKE THOSE LIMITATIONS OFF AND YOU'LL BEGIN TO START SEEING RESULTS. BOY, MY LIFE IS A TESTIMONY OF THIS. I'M SEEING GREAT THINGS HAPPEN. WE'RE SEEING PEOPLE'S LIVES CHANGED. I JUST WAS AT A MEETING THIS LAST WEEK AND I MUST HAVE HAD 20 OR 30 PEOPLE COME UP IN TEARS JUST SAYING THAT IT'S CHANGED THEIR LIFE. THESE TRUTHS ARE CHANGING THEIR LIFE. GOD IS USING ME TO TOUCH PEOPLE. GOD CAN USE YOU TO TOUCH PEOPLE. GOD CAN CHANGE YOUR SITUATION, BUT HE CAN'T DO IT IF YOU ARE CARNALLY MINDED, IF YOU ARE JUST LIMITED TO THIS PHYSICAL REALM. YOU'VE GOT TO FIND OUT THAT YOU ARE A BRAND NEW PERSON. AND IF YOU'VE BEEN BORN AGAIN, YOUR SPIRIT NOW IS COMPLETE. IT'S AS PERFECT RIGHT NOW AS IT WILL EVER BE IN ETERNITY. YOU DON'T NEED A NEW SPIRIT. YOU DON'T NEED MORE POWER. YOU NEED TO START DRAWING OUT WHAT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT. IF FOR SOME REASON YOU'RE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM AND YOU DON'T, YOU AREN'T BORN AGAIN, WELL THEN YOU'RE IN A BAD SITUATION. YOU DON'T HAVE LIFE ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. AND I GUARANTEE YOU, REGARDLESS OF WHAT KIND OF HELP YOU GET, IT'S GOING TO EVENTUALLY EVAPORATE AND BE GONE. YOU NEED TO BE CHANGED FROM THE INSIDE OUT AND YOU CAN DO THAT BY CALLING OUR HELPLINE. WE'VE GOT THAT NUMBER ON THE SCREEN AND YOU CAN BE BORN AGAIN. BUT IF YOU ARE BORN AGAIN, NOW YOU ARE A BRAND NEW PERSON AND THIS BOOK WILL HELP YOU TO UNDERSTAND WHO YOU ARE IN CHRIST. WHAT HAS HAPPENED TO YOU? IT'S YOUR SPIRIT THAT WAS CHANGED. THIS IS WHAT CHANGED MY LIFE. AND REMEMBER THAT TODAY IS MY LAST DAY TO GIVE THIS TO YOU AS A FREE GIFT. IT'S A 160-PAGE BOOK AND I'M GIVING IT TO YOU WITHOUT ANY STRINGS ATTACHED. I ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET IT. YOU CAN CALL. YOU CAN GO TO OUR WEBSITE. YOU CAN ORDER IT. BUT THIS IS OUR LAST DAY TO MAKE THIS TEACHING AVAILABLE AS A FREE GIFT. I ALSO HAVE THIS TEACHING IN SPANISH. WE HAVE THIS TRANSLATED, I THINK, INTO ABOUT 30-SOMETHING LANGUAGES. AND THEN WE ALSO HAVE A STUDY GUIDE THAT IS THE SAME MATERIAL, JUST REFORMATTED SO THAT YOU CAN TEACH OTHER PEOPLE AND I HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S AND THEN DVD'S THAT WERE TAKEN FROM A MEETING. WE HAVE AN AUDIO BOOK. WE HAVE USB'S. AND WE ALSO HAVE AN ILLUSTRATED TEACHING WHERE I'M TEACHING BUT SOMEONE IS ILLUSTRATING THIS uh, IN CARTOON FORMAT OR ANIMATED FORMAT AS I'M TEACHING. REMEMBER THAT TODAY IS MY LAST DAY TO MAKE THIS AVAILABLE OVER THE TELEVISION. AND SO PLEASE GO TO THE EFFORT TO GET THIS. I, I KNOW IT WOULD BE A BLESSING TO YOU. LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER. AS HE GIVES YOU THIS INFORMATION, AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY.